Happy Halloween, 60 Symbols viewers. Okay, so Halloween is upon us, and uh, so I've been casting around looking for something suitably astronomical that celebrates Halloween. So our stretch today is to talk about the Witch's Broom Nebula, because some people think it does resemble a witch's broom, perhaps out of Harry Potter. I don't quite see it so much, but uh, I, I, other people do. <laughs> well, in this case, we're looking at a supernova remnant. So this is the expanding shock wave from a star that probably exploded or 5,000 or 8,000 years ago. And when a star explodes, it sort of throws its gas out into space, and that gas then interacts with the, the interstellar medium that's already out there um, and heats it up and, and makes it glow. And so you have this big, almost spherical, ball, uh, a sphere, sort of hollow sphere of material that's glowing, that's how far the explosion's got. And one of the sections of this, if you think about a sphere, the bits that you're seeing edge on, you'd be looking right through my hand, right? The bit you're seeing face on, you'd just be seeing through my hand, whereas here you'd be seeing the full width of my hand. So actually you see the edges much more clearly because you're looking through more stuff. And the witch's broom is one small part of a much larger nebula called the Veil Nebula, which is actually quite large. It's about three degrees across. And to put that in perspective, um, your thumb outstretched covers an, uh, an angle of about two degrees on the sky. Um, so it's slightly larger than your outstretched thumb. And when you think about it, the full moon itself is only half a degree. So this is actually quite a large object on the sky. It's really like a bubble. It's like a big bubble you're looking at. And it's not a perfectly spherical bubble because different bits have expanded by slightly different amounts. But basically, yeah, it's a big, big hollow sphere you're looking at. You're talking about a thing which is expanding at sort of a thousand kilometers per second or thereabouts. So it's, it's cracking along at a fair old speed. And that's the reason why it glows at all, is because you've got this material that's expanding outwards and basically smacking into the material that's there and shock heating it. So it's only because there are these very high speeds involved that the thing gets hot enough to glow in the dark. It is quite bright, but that brightness is spread out over this very large area, which means its surface brightness is actually quite low. So it's very difficult to see. And in fact, what you are seeing, if you look closely at the, the pictures, you're seeing these sort of filamentary rope-like structures. The shock wave has hit this diffuse gas, and although it's happening in a three-dimensional shell, you're really only seeing it when, when you look down enough of it um, that it becomes visible. And that only happens on the edge when you're looking down a fair amount of material along the line of sight. It's just chance. If you look at enough places in the sky, you'll start picking out shapes, and this one just happens to end up looking like a broomstick. If I was in a spacecraft, like the Space Shuttle, and I flew into the, the shockwave, I flew into this thing head-on, which looks like this big, beautiful, gentle thing, any, any ideas what to expect? Would I go through it like flying through a cloud, or would it be good night, Irene? It's a good question. It's one of those tricky ones that you'd have to do a lot of calculations to figure out in detail. My guess would be you probably wouldn't notice because the densities are, are pretty low. I mean, it's still pretty much the vacuum of space. And it's only, the only reason you see it is because it's, you know, it's spread out over a huge area. And so over that huge area, there's an awful lot of atoms. So there's another one called the, the Witch Head Nebula, um, which is, in some ways, it's the same kind of thing. It's another of these clouds out there in space. Um, which looks remarkably like a witch's head. I think this is one of those cases where the human eye is really good at picking out faces, even where there isn't anything to see, like that famous face on the moon and those kinds of things. Um, and so this is, uh, this is that kind of feature, that there's a, a face-like object uh, in, a, in a cloud. Um, and really what you've got there is a thing called a reflection nebula. You've got a relatively bright star, Rigel, nearby, and then there's just this cloud of gas next to it, and the light from Rigel is lighting up the cloud, and then some of that light is, is just being absorbed by the cloud and then re-emitted in our direction. Yeah, so it, it, it has a rather bluish sort of tinge to it, uh, which also adds to its vaguely witchy, spooky nature. Um, but the reason for the, that it comes out the shade of blue is a sort of interesting piece of physics, which is that the, the Rigel, the star that's lighting it up, of course, it's emitting light from all across the spectrum, red light, green light, blue light. But the red light tends to go straight through. It's only the blue light that gets scattered towards us. And in fact, it's the same kind of physics as why the sky looks blue when you look at the sky. Because, of course, when you're looking at the sky, you're seeing scattered sunlight. And sunlight gets more scattered by the molecules in the atmosphere at the blue end of the spectrum than the red end of the spectrum. Um, and here, it's the same kind of physics, but here, what's doing the... Uh, the scattering is actually dust grains, little dust grains, but they have the same property that they tend much more to scatter blue light than red light. Red light goes straight through, the blue light gets scattered towards us. So Halloween itself is actually an astronomical date. It's known as a cross-quarter date in the calendar. So it's halfway between the equinox and the winter solstice. So the equinox being where there's equal amounts of day and night, the solstice being the longest 
um, night of the year. And so this is halfway in between. And traditionally, it kind of marks the beginning, the real beginning of winter 